where we still are experiencing each other as our enemies. We're still living in this fake reality, in this matrix, that we're supposed to be oppositions of each other. And in one narrative, one side's the good side, the other side's the bad side. And the other narrative, it's reversed. And the reality is that they're both the good side. There are extremist voice on both camps that are the bad side, but there are really interest groups that are profiting from our conflict. Imagine if Israelis and Palestinians actually transcended this conflict, how much stronger our region can be if we created a united Middle East. Historically, Israelis and Palestinians are not enemies. In fact, we're actually cousins. It is stated in many genetic testings that they've done that 30 to 60% of Palestinian origins and DNA is actually Jewish DNA. So it's Jews that were converted to Islam or to Christianity over time. And with time, because they were no longer a part of the Jewish people, were Arabized because that was the culture that had spread throughout the region, this Arab identity, which is why you find Arab identity in Morocco and Algeria that historically were not part of Arabia. And so you have a reality where this population that is so similar, so connected, is now being experienced as total enemies towards one another. And how did this become? We need to understand who is benefiting from our division and who was the previous colonial power that actually was here, that its MO, wherever it operated, was always to divide and conquer. Before 1948, before the liberation of Israel, the British were here. And the same thing that they did everywhere in the world, whether it's between India and Pakistan, dividing this piece of land and forcing people to fight each other, or in Afghanistan, or in Nigeria, dividing the Igbos, the Yoruba, and the House of Fulani and creating this country called Nigeria, and forcing local peoples to fight each other rather than to fight them in order to control that land. They did the same thing to the Israelis and Palestinians. Now, how did they create this big manipulation, convincing Israelis and Jews that Palestinians and Arabs are bad? And how did they convince the Palestinians and Arabs that Jews and Israelis were bad? Well, the first thing that they did is something called the Balfour Declaration. And what's interesting is that many Palestinians constantly source the Balfour Declaration as a proof that we're illegitimate. Whereas many Jews source the Balfour Declaration as some sort of like right, that we have a right to be able to live in this land because the British had given us this land. However, if you look at history, the reason the British left this land is due to Jewish terrorism. It's written in official British records that the reason they left is because the Jews made them leave and made them realize that they could no longer stay here. And after so much terrorism to its military, eventually the British left. So. What did the British do really with the Balfour Declaration? Because the Balfour Declaration was written in 1917. And what is it? It's a document, a one page document with one paragraph that says, we have the intention that in this land, we are to create a Jewish state. It was actually a letter written to Lord Balfour saying the intentions of the official British government. But hold up, the British didn't own the land or have access to the land or occupy the land in 1917. It was under the Ottoman Empire. So what are you stating that you have the intention to give this piece of land to the Jews that you don't even own? That's a little bit strange. And let's fast forward a few decades later during the Holocaust, right? Let's say in the 30s and in the 40s in Europe where anti-Semitism was rising and the Jewish people were being hunted by the Nazis, you would assume that if the British had the true intention of allowing to create a Jewish state in this land, fast forward to now a reality where they're actually controlling this land during that time, and they also have a common enemy. The enemy of the Jewish people was the Nazis, the Germans, and the enemy of the British was the Nazis and Germans. Wouldn't it make sense that if the British truly wanted to create a Jewish state, that they would do it dafka in the moment where they have a common enemy? Where all these Jews were fleeing from Europe to save their lives, going to the land of Israel and the British were turning those ships back and forcing them to go back to the gas chambers. So was it really ever the intention of the British to create a Jewish state? And what we see in the actions of the British, even when Jews started coming back to the land of Israel, even after the Holocaust, you can look up the white papers where they were preventing Jewish immigration into the land. So if you break down all the actions of the British, besides just this one piece of paragraph paper, you would realize that the British did everything but to allow the creation of a state. So then the question becomes, why did they create the Balfour Declaration? Why did they even talk about that they wanted to create a Jewish state if in their actions and practice, it shows the exact opposite? Well, what they wanted is to give the experience to the Arab world and to Palestinians that the idea of Zionism, that the idea of Jews returning back to their homeland was an extension of European colonialism, which is exactly why every single time the Arab world and Palestinians refers and understands or thinks about Zionism, they think about it as an extension of European colonialism. And the source that they'll always point to first 
as to why it is, is the Balfour Declaration. Exactly what the British had in mind by creating this little document to trick the Arab world into thinking that us coming back to our indigenous homeland was a threat to them, they succeeded. Now, how did they convince the Jews that the Palestinians in the Arab world were bad? Well, the British appointed a person to be the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, to be the leader of the Palestinians. His name is Hajimin al Husseini. And Hajimin al Husseini was a vehement anti Semite, met several times with Hitler. There's many pictures online of him meeting Hitler. And he even told Hitler, when you're finished with the Jews here, come to the Middle East to get rid of the Jews. Now, why would the British, that are supposed to be against the Nazis, that are supposed to be for the Jews, appoint an individual that is so anti the Jewish people if they wanted to find a way for people to get along. And this person didn't represent all the Palestinians. He was appointed as the leader of the Palestinians by the British, not elected, not chosen by the Palestinians. So why would the British intentionally appoint this individual to be the leader and the voice of the Palestinians? Well, simple, to give the experience of the Jews and the Israelis of what Palestinians and Arabs really wanted was our destruction and our murder. And this is exactly how they succeeded to convince us that we were each other's enemy, that achieving any aspiration from the other side was a direct removal of the aspiration of us. And because of that, we fell for the trap. We fought each other. We did exactly what all other nations under British colonialism did. And because of that, we had 1948, 1967, 1973, leading all the way up to the conflict that we have today, where we still are experiencing each other as our enemies. We're still living in this fake reality, in this matrix that we're supposed to be oppositions of each other. And in one narrative, one side's the good side, the other side's the bad side. And the other narrative, it's reversed, and they're the good side, and they're the bad side. And the reality is that they're both the good side. There are extremist voice on both camps that are the bad side, but there are really interest groups that are profiting from our conflict. For them to keep fighting, imagine if Israelis and Palestinians actually transcended this conflict. How much stronger our region can be if we created a united Middle East. How much of a threat that would impose to the rest of the world that is profiting from us fighting each other, that is selling weapons to both sides, that is making sure that we stay down rather than rise up. You have to ask yourself, who would benefit and who would not benefit from that reality? Obviously, Israelis, Palestinians living in this region would benefit from a reality of the Middle East United. Who wouldn't benefit? And I think the only way for us to eventually get there is to wake up from the matrix that we've been sleeping in, to realize who's really profiting, to see the human being, the cousin that we have in front of us, and to say, no more. We will build a better future, but it starts together. It's a journey. It starts with a conversation. It's a process, but we can only get there once we realize this.